Be in the house of the Lord. I'm looking at that picture thinking, oh, spring, hurry up. Yeah. <laughs> that, like, church looks so pretty. The trees, the green trees, the green grass. Soon, my friends, soon spring will be here. Uh, yeah. That's the new one. That's the new one? That's the one I read after we got it. Done. Awesome. Very cool. Anybody have any prayer requests or any testimonies tonight? No, I kind of got a few prayer requests. Joe's mother died in and I guess it at the age of the year and he didn't know what to do. And uh, Kim Parsons is supposed to help him plan his service. I said, you need to, you know, start seeking God. Don't rely on yourself. And I'm sitting here and he just goes, talk on me and ask real stupid. And if I out of the play, you really can get a hold of yourself, buddy. And you know what you think this thing to do is share you. I can't even that girl he does and I'm sitting there I can't have a negative like that in the place. Uh, these people are so uncooperative with work and let me out in the cold having to freeze to death my toes. That's not I don't know why you're at a store. Something needs to give in there, and they don't want to help me, and then I uh, even look for another job or after the guy had to go, and I'm getting hurt, and I'm like, you can't do this guy. He's going to go, I went and did all my work today, but it's like, what are you going to do with the customers who are going to get it back? You know, you're going to go through your, you know, through your, your blocks and clean this up. And then, well, I knew that they could only do so much, but still, the fact is, when I'm running those little carts, they don't have any room to do it. Is that really teamwork? I mean, you really have to declare warfare on this and that. So I didn't like that. I'm so shocked that they even act like that after a snowstorm. And then you're supposed to go out there and help people. Well, I was out and seeing that people were stuck. Then I'd go out there and make out the parking lot. They were telling me to listen to the flat. They were telling me to listen to the flat. They were telling me to listen to the flat. They were telling me to listen to the flat. They were telling me to listen to focused on Jesus, but we need to be everybody's so focused on Super Bowl that they are getting a list running down people's houses and everything and you talk about that throwing me nuts on Sunday like what is that supposed to be? Are we real we're supposed to focus on God? And the guy said thank you to God and yet yeah, the one guy's house was broken and still was done and turned out the news that's mm -hmm. the house here. But, <clears throat> so we just hope that we I want to make sure that we declare that out Friday for sure. All this anxiety of clothes. I don't want it to be, but it's all I'm seeing it too much, and we really need to be super focused this weekend. Okay. You know. Okay. Yeah. Uh, for Holly and Tracy, uh, Holly's mom broke her foot last week. I think it was broke her foot last last week. Uh, I can't remember exactly what it was, but she's down and uh, they were in transition to get her to uh, a different facility for her to be taken care of and stuff like that. So all of a sudden they're having to get her house uh, prepped to sell out. They're, they're having to clean. There's a lot of stuff in this house apparently that they got to go through and they got to do it in a quick time. So always they'd be here tonight, Friday or Saturday and Sunday. But just pray for Holly and Tracy and her, his mom, actually. Okay. So, just look at them. Well, remember them? Yeah. Anyone else tonight? Yeah, Tim. Yes, I, I asked you to uh, remember me uh, in prayer. Uh, she makes some decisions, you know. I, I think when, when, you, when you can pray for your kids, you just pray that um, God guides them. And then there's a young man named Taylor. I just asked you to pray for him. Because I always like to see young people at least looking toward the future, the mm -hmm. goals they have. And then, you know, when they put God in the midst and let God guide them mm -hmm. and, and put them in uh, the right direction where they're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. You know, because if you, if you think about a person that's, say, 20 years old and surrenders their life to the Lord and they live to be, you know, 60 or 
seven years old, mm-hmm. how many years they can give to the Lord. Amen. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I just, I, I was just so impressed with young man. I got a chance to talk with him and uh, just got a gentle spirit about it. And he, and he wants to follow, you know, the Lord do the right right thing with his life. And, and I just, I always admire that. Mm-hmm. You know, just that's great. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, speaking of the uh, youth, uh, just look, looked up the cult. I haven't seen her in a couple of weeks. So just looked her up, and uh, so many other youth uh, that haven't been here in a while. Uh, they, they're spotty and stuff. And uh, the youth group is doing good as a whole. Uh, it's just individually, uh, there's some issues amongst all of them that um, they all need lifted up, uh, prayer for and stuff. But, um, I'm seeing as they come together. The point, the more the more that come together, it seems like the better along things are smoother and smoother. So just it's growing pains, but it's working. It's working. Just keep lifting up. Praise the Lord. Amen. All right, well, let's stand and go to the Lord's night. Heavenly Father. Yes. We come into your house, this house of prayer. Yes. We lift up these needs before you, Lord. Knowing that when we put our hope and our trust in you, when we let it go, we put it in your hands, that you are faithful, Lord, that you always make the way, that you never disappoint. Give your people eyes to see and ears to hear as you speak in every situation. We pray for James and his roommate. Pray for all those situations at work, Lord, in his home. We speak peace to the storm, Lord, peace to the chaos. Peace to the confusion, Lord. We pray for Holly and for Tracy and the situation with his mother's house. That you give them strength and wisdom, Lord, how to deal with it quickly and appropriately, Lord. That you touch his mother for healing, Lord, in that ankle, Lord, that she would be strengthened, Lord. Jesus, we pray for Bibiana, Lord, and Tim's other young man. We ask you to speak to these young people, Lord. Let your will be known in their life, Lord, and let them learn to call upon you and let them learn to trust you and follow after you. Let their hearts be tender to hear and to seek your voice, Lord. For we know that you are faithful. We pray for the youth of this church, Lord. Every one of them, the Nicole, the other kids we haven't seen for a while. Touch them wherever they are, Lord. Let them know that they are part of a body of Christ that misses them, that they are an essential part of this body, Lord, and that they are important and that God has a purpose and a plan for them. For all the youth associated with this church, Lord, for all the adults associated with this church, Lord, give your people confidence in the purpose that you have set before each of us. Lord, you have a purpose and a plan, a path for each of us to walk, a race that we all must run, side by side, but yet one by one. Jesus, we come, Lord, and we ask for your guidance, Lord. We ask you to remove the obstacles before us and make the way before us known, one step at a time. We thank you, Lord, for the renewing of our minds by the hearing of your word. We thank you that that word takes root and takes hold in our heart and that it yields good fruit for our families and for our lives and for those that we love and for this body, Abundant Life Community Church on the east side of Des Moines. As we gather together tonight, we gather in your name. We gather to seek you, Lord. We're here whether we're hungry, whether we're thirsty, whether we're exhausted, Lord, whether we're confused, or whether we're rejoicing, we gather together in your name because you are what really matters, Lord. It's all about you. Help us to let go of all of the weights of this world, all the distractions of this world, and just turn our eyes and our hearts and our minds and focus on you for this time we have together. Come and do what you always do, Lord. Come and reveal yourself. Reveal yourself and help us know you more, that we might be transformed by your love and your grace, Lord, to be more like you.
Have your way in this service tonight, Lord. Have your way in this service tonight. Your presence, Lord, is where we want to be. In your presence is fullness of joy, Lord. And let the joy of the Lord strengthen your people. As the battles rage, Lord, as the world whirls around us, bring that joy that comes from knowing you. That first love, Lord, stir up our hearts to remember that first love. The fire that we saw in your eyes and the fire that burned in ours. Have your way tonight, Lord. Prepare our hearts for this week of worship, this week of prayer, this week of fellowship, Lord. So precious when the saints gather together. Every time two or more are gathered together and call upon your name, things change. And tonight we ask that things be forever changed in the name of Jesus. Amen. Jesus, you are good, Lord. Just a reminder that if you brought a cell phone, please silence it until after the service. And Friday night. Hallelujah. We're on. We're on. Um, I was showing something. Uh, even during when the Super Bowl was on, uh, I didn't watch it. And some of you probably saw the posts and stuff that I had uh, associated with it and stuff like that. But um, even as I mentioned last Sunday, um, the trafficking that's going on with these young ones has got to come to, uh, it's at a breaking point that needs to be dealt with in the unseen realm. Uh, and the, I inquired of the Lord of this, how, how do I, how, what's the strategy? What's the strategy? What's the strategy? What's the strategy? And as I put in the post, um, the Lord wants to deal with the hearts of men. As the hearts of these men are transformed, the ones that are that are that are desiring these these evil these evil things, if the hearts of these men would would be changed, um, the market I could use that word market, but that market would dry up. Um, there would be no call for this abomination that's going on on all these young ones. Uh, it, would, it would cease because there would be no want. Um, so Lord is saying, I want you, even coming into this weekend, to come after me to help understand how I want to release on this region and on this nation how to transform the hearts of men. And then after Friday is Saturday. And this may continue into Saturday. Um, it'll be 9 to 9, 9 to 1 until 9 at night up in Heartland. And Ankeny, uh, Bud of Life, has a niche of, from 5 to 7. Um, it's almost like the uh, coming up to the last inning, and, and they want us there from that time to basically get a fire blazing. Through the day, it's it's good. It's awesome times. If you want some uh, reflective times, and, and uh, they have drum circles and things like that going on through the day. Um, but it seems like we start a pot up when when we come, and I'm hoping uh, that more of the abundant life people will be able to make it this time. I love it when Rick and, and uh, other people step in and, and fill the gaps in and stuff like that. I love it when they do that. There's, there's a unity in there, um, but I'm hoping praying that uh, more of our team would be able to make it this time and uh, represent a mother like the Eastern Gatehouse for herself. Let's see what happens and uh, uh, be diligent. Just be diligent. It's only once a month for two hours. It, it's happy hour, half price print. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it is a happy two hours. So. Uh, wanted. Uh, Michael is doing rigorous interviews for anybody who is interested in helping with the soundboard. Is that a four one K matching? <laughs> Probably. Yeah. I'm guessing no, but <laughs> yeah. zero plus zero times zero is still zero. So yes, it does match. Mm -hmm. 
Um, anybody interested in helping, please talk to Michael. We need some help back in the sound booth. So. All right. Uh, Ron, you want to come take an offering tonight? Please, we can here.
Thank you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. We thank you for your presence, Lord, that never leaves us. But we thank you, Lord, that at times you become even more manifest in our lives than in others. Though you're always with us, Lord, we become more aware. We thank you for that, Lord, that you speak even to our humanity as well as our spirit. You were a man now a resurrected man, a glorified body, and you understand the feelings of our infirmities, you can relate to them, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, for your compassion, for your faithfulness, and for your great love. And tonight, Lord, we just want to say that we love you. We're thankful, Lord, for all that you are and all that you do in our lives. And we bless your name. You are our God, our Father. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our soon coming King. Yes, Lord. And we celebrate that every day in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Everybody said praise the Lord. Praise Amen. The Lord. Give him a hand tonight. Praise God. Thank the Lord. Praise God. Thank you, Suzanne, for opening. Thank you, Mike, and the worship team. Thanks all of you for being here tonight. Praise the Lord. It's Wednesday night, so you know what that means. No boxers. Briefs. <laughs> we'll be brief tonight. Praise the Lord. Thank God. Amen. We are so blessed, amen, to uh, yes. to know the Lord. Praise God. I was thinking today, and I'm grateful. I really am. I know I, I say things sometimes that sound like maybe I'm ridiculing our Pentecostal roots. That's not the case at all. There's much benefit from that. We, we, we gained a lot of revelation and... Uh, intimacy with the Lord in a lot of ways that I wouldn't trade for anything. But on the other hand, there are some th religious aspects to that that were, you know, that are kind of frustrating now when you think about it. I mean, <coughs> everything was, everything was bad. Everything was sin. And it kind of sets a tone for the way that we then try to move forward. And it, it, it kind of rears up every once in a while and reminds you of that. But I can remember thinking, I mean, everything was sin. Deviled eggs, yeah. <laughs> deviled ham. Praise the Lord! You just don't want to eat that stuff. Deviled fruit cake. Praise the Lord! I almost—that's where I almost bailed out, you know. But praise the Lord! God is good. Amen. You know, we were against facial hair, and then it grew on me. So. Thank you, James. Praise the Lord. <laughs> But God is good. Amen. And uh, we're certainly not mocking God or making fun of the Lord, but it just shows you how uh, when, we, when humans get involved and, and don't allow the Lord to lead us, you can get into a lot of crazy stuff. And So thank the Lord. Amen. We appreciate the fact that He said He will never leave us nor forsake us. Amen. And so even when we, you know, it's all a journey. And you know, when you think about where you've come from when you were away from God, then when you kind of gradually come through different, the different steps that each of us come in different ways and through different churches and so on and so forth. But God never gave up on us. He, you know, we, he just keeps drawing us deeper and deeper into him. And, and that's what we're really interested in more than anything else. Amen. More than what we call ourselves in terms of the church that we go to or, or those things. But the fact that we are one with him amen that he has made us amen a part of who he is praise the lord so with that in mind let's let's begin i want to uh, read a couple of verses from ephesians 2 ephesians 2 uh, verses 5 and 6 and i'm going to move through fairly quickly i've got several scriptures here but i'm not going to take a whole lot of time these are things that we know but things that we have a tendency to kind of just push to the back and let our uh, natural way of thinking kind of dominate us too much of the time praise the lord i know it's true for me and i assume that for some of you it, it must be the same thing at times so praise the lord ephesians 2 5 and 6 he said even when we were dead in sins hath quickened us together with christ by grace you're saved and hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in christ jesus not you know what happens is the longer you're in church, the longer you have a, a kind of a connection with the Word of God, I think what happens many, many times is we, we read it, but we don't read it anymore. Right. We just, you know, mimic the words and we say them out or we speak them out or we look at them, but we're not really letting them get a part of us. We're, we're not letting the Word really get into our heart and really look at it seriously for what it's saying. We just go, yeah, well, I know that. But you know, faith comes by hearing, and hearing, that's an ongoing thing, the Word of God. So not 
not our interpretation, not some you know theological thing, not some denominational thing, but the, by the Spirit of God. Amen. So he says he hath raised us up. So we were dead. We were totally separate from God in our sins, and but he has made us alive. He's quickened us together with Christ. Now, look at the language he's saying. Together with Christ. He didn't just independently raise Suzanne or Mike or, you know, Tim or Leah or Ron. He didn't just, you know, he raised you up with Christ. Yes. Amen. He has quickened you, made you alive together with Christ and has raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. All right. Now, Hebrews chapter four and verse two. And he said, this gospel was preached as well unto them, but the word preached didn't profit them. They didn't, they didn't get any benefit from it. Amen. Because it wasn't mixed with faith when they heard it. So I can tell you, I mean, I heard, I heard scriptures read many, many times over the years before I came to the Lord. And uh, I didn't have any faith in it. I mean, I guess I, I believed in a God. But I was more of a theist probably than anything else. I just thought he kind of, you know, he did the whole thing and then he just walked out on it. But this is what happens to us a lot of times. The Word comes to us. God reveals Himself through His Word. But it doesn't really profit us. I mean, we don't really get the benefit. Think about it. Uh, different churches and different denominations, different believers, they hear the Word preached but they don't believe in healing. They're, they don't profit because they don't believe in healing. They haven't mixed their faith with that. By His stripes we were healed. Right? Finances. He became poor that we can be, we became rich. We hear it. We've all heard it. And we know people that have heard it. Just go, well, you know, that's just the name it and claim it stuff. No, it's, it's the Word of God. But if it's not mixed with faith, it doesn't profit you. You don't gain anything from it. You don't get anything from it. And it's true with everything in the Scripture. Right? He says how much He loves us. If we don't believe it, we don't gain anything from that. We don't profit a thing from it. So that's what He's trying to get us to understand. The head is Christ. The body is the church. That's us independently and us collectively. Amen? And He says that we are raised together, amen, with Him. Praise the Lord. The authority... That belongs to Jesus, and that's what we're talking about when it says He is raised up and seated at the right hand of God, which is the position of power. That's symbolic of the right hand, the power of God. All power, all authority is given to Him, right? He tells us, go ye therefore. Why? Because we have been raised up and are seated with Him in this position of power. So, the authority that belongs to Jesus also belongs to us individual members of the body of Christ. Yes. And again, we know that, but do we really live our lives this way? I mean, it kind of comes and goes when we come to a crisis and then maybe we'll kind of reach out for it, but we should live every day. Our, our lives ought to be this way. Like, hey, I've got authority here. I don't have to take this. Right? 1 Corinthians chapter 12, uh, verses 12 through 14. 1 Corinthians 12, 12 through 14. For as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. Praise the Lord. Are you seeing it? What are you saying here? For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. Whose spirit? His spirit. We're all one. Whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have all been made to drink into one spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. Verse 27. Now you are the body of Christ, and members in particular. All right? 1 Corinthians 6, verse 17. 
this ought to be, this is what we should be meditating. This is what we should be saying to ourselves. This is what we should be reminding ourselves of as we go through our days. Amen. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. You can't separate me from the Lord. His spirit and my spirit is one. Your spirit and his spirit is one. Praise the Lord. If you believe it, there's some profit in this. I mean, there's something to gain. Praise the Lord. So we are one with Christ. Now let me just say this. and I, I know it sounds blasphemous, but I'm saying what this Word of God says. We are one with Christ. We are Christ. Hallelujah. That ought to be shouting stuff. I mean, if I was back in our old church, somebody would be rolling on the floor right now. Praise the Lord. Somebody would be, there would be bobby pins flying. There would be shrapnel in the air. Hallelujah. Because we'd be excited. This is a fact. This is a truth. Amen. And we have to start walking in this newness of life. That's what he talks about. We're new creatures. Amen. We are seated at the right hand of the majesty on high. We died with Christ. We have been raised up together with Christ. Yes, Lord. Praise the Lord. Every day, all the time. When I'm screwed up and when I'm not screwed up. When I'm behaving badly and when I'm behaving really religiously. Praise the Lord. I'm still one with Christ. I'm still seated in a position of power and authority. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hebrews 1, verse 13 and 14. But to which of the angels said he at any time, sit on my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool? You know, we're, we get all freaky about angels. I mean, they make us nervous. You know what I'm saying? Maybe it's just me that gets nervous. But I'm, I mean, we look at angels as being some exalted thing, some really deal, big deal. Right? I mean, it's just because we're flesh. But look what he said. Name an angel, amen, that I said any time. You can sit by my right hand. Name me an angel that he said that to. Not Gabriel. Amen. Not, not, there isn't any. That's the rhetorical question that he's asking is, which one? What, tell, tell me, which one did I, which one did I say at any time, any time, anywhere in, in, you know, the eons of time and eternity past, did I ever say, sit on my right hand till I make my enemies, your enemies, my footstool. And then he goes on to say, aren't they ministering spirits sent forth to minister to, to you? Aren't they your servants? Yes. And you've, you've made them something more than you. And I've never, I've never said that to any of them. I've never ever even, the thought never occurred to me to give them all power and have them seated with me in heavenly places. But I've used them, those things that you see as so spiritual, I use them as messengers and as servants to serve you. Yeah. Amen. Those that are heirs of salvation. Yes. Praise the Lord. We are seated with him. Sharing his throne. His authority. Angels respond to your words. Yes. Hallelujah. Praise God. Angels minister for us. The heirs of salvation. Yes. The joint heirs with Jesus. Those that are seated at the right hand. And if you believed what he said, they'll believe what you say. Come on. Praise the Lord. Amen. It's just like Jesus speaking. He's been given all power. It's just like God speaking in this earth when you speak with the authority and the understanding of who you are in Christ. Amen. You are Jesus. Romans 5, verse 17. Come boldly to the throne of grace, he says. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. Not later on after you die and leave this physical realm, but right now in this life we are to reign as kings on this earth. We are kings and priests. He is our high priest. He's the king of kings. But we are kings and priests seated at the right hand with all authority. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. John 14 and 12. Verse 
at some point, we got to start believing and start acting like who we really are. Praise the Lord. I believe there's coming a great revival. I, I believe there'll be one that will cause the book of Acts to look like just what it was, the beginning. Yes. Amen. Magnificent things happened. But it was just a prototype. It was just to give us a glimpse of what can happen when people really believe and act on what they believe. So verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go to my Father. If he went to the Father, we went with him. That's what he's talking about. It isn't like I'm bailing on you guys and I'll send back the Holy Spirit. No, we're seated with him. We have that authority. We have that ability, that authority that can be exercised on the earth has to be exercised through us, the body, the church. Yes, Lord. Amen. He's not going to do something else. He's not going to do something else. Right. If anything gets done here, we're the ones that got to do it. We are the Jesus in this earth. Right. Amen. Seated with Him in heavenly places. Amen. In that position of authority and power. Praise the Lord. Hebrews 4 and 2 again. For unto us was this gospel preached as well as unto them, but the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith unto them that heard it. How long has this gospel been preached? To over 2,000 years. And we've seen isolated incidences and opportunities and, and, and times when people would take this and actually step out in it and do it. And even some of us have experienced Maybe a, a point here and a, and, and a time over there and something over here. But not consistently. And not to the degree that God really wants us to experience it. Yes. As long as the devil can keep you in unbelief or trap you in the reason realm or the sense realm, mm -hmm. the soul realm, praise the Lord, he'll beat you every time. Yes. Like Andrew Womack says, he'll steal your lunch and pop the bag. Yeah. Praise the Lord. And that's what he does. Look at Hebrews 5 and 12. 5, 12 through 14. Hebrews 5, 12 through 14. And this is an interesting scripture that, you know, it kind of bothered me over the years, but I've done a little studying on it here recently in the context of this particular scripture, but, or in this particular message. So, for, when, for the time you ought to be teachers, you have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God and are become such as have a need of milk and not strong meat. For everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But strong meat belongs to them that are of full age. Even those who... Buy, and by the way, remember in, 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 where he says, you know, you're all like uh, little kids. You're heirs, but you, until you grow up, until you mature, you can't get your inheritance, even though it's all yours. So this is a kind of a parallel of that thought. And he says, but strong meat belongs to them that are full age. Even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Now, here's what that word, that word is a Greek word. Uh, exercise is gumna, d, gumna, <laughs> wait, yeah, okay. Greek, not Italian. Gumnadpo. Gunadpo. And you know what it means? Naked. You ha who have had their senses stripped. It relates to, in the Greek times, they fought naked. When they had their games, you know, their, their, what we call the Olympics today, when they had those, you know, the wrestling and all that stuff. They, they were nude. And that's what he's talking about. They, they, your senses become stripped. In other words, they don't dominate you anymore. Strong meat belongs to them that are full age, even those who by the reason, who by reason of use, have their senses exercised so they can discern good and evil. You don't discern that by your senses, you discern it by the Spirit. Praise the Lord. So, with that said, if you hold the devil in the spirit realm by faith, you'll beat him like a drum. 
He has no defense against you. That's why he always has to get us into the flesh, into the sense realm. Praise the Lord. He's telling me that what maturity is, is when you have exercised your senses. When you have stripped your senses of its dominance. Now, now you're a teacher. Because the only thing that's teaching us, who, what's, who's a teacher? The Holy Spirit is our teacher. He'll lead us and guide us into all truth. Hallelujah. Okay, John 14, uh, verses 13 and 14. John 14, 13 and 14. And here's another good example. Whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Now remember, he's already, we, we've already been told that we are seated. We have, we have identical authority. Because we are heirs and joint heirs with Christ, we're seated with Him in heavenly places. We have the authority of God. All power is given unto us, right? So then He says, And whatsoever you will ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. That word is not, that is not talking about prayer. Right. And that's kind of the way it's been interpreted over the years. But that is not prayer. That word ask is a Greek word that is punthan oma he. That's not the way it's pronounced, but that's the word. Amen. I'm not, I don't speak Greek. Didn't know that, did you? <laughs> Praise the Lord. That word, puntan om ahi, is a demand for something due. It's not begging. It's not asking in the way that we think of asking. It's demanding something that is due you. The Greek actually reads, literally, it reads, whatever you demand as your rights and privileges, you'll get it. And we're begging. And we're pleading for something that we're supposed to be declaring is ours and demanding. And that's why he says, come boldly to the throne of grace. Demand. Make. He said, command ye me. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And we're, we're still out here floundering around wondering why things aren't happening the way they're supposed to be happening because we haven't believed who we really are. We haven't believed our identity in Christ, the righteousness of God in Christ, seated with Him. All power. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Now, if you take this out of context, you're going to miss what Paul's trying to tell us. Because, first of all, this is the book of Ephesians, and it wasn't a book when Paul wrote it. It was a letter. There were no chapters. There were no verses. It was just continuous writing. Amen. It was a letter. So what he wrote before this is all part of the context of what he's saying here, just like in any letter that you would write. All right? So look at Ephesians chapter 1, 19 through 23. Ephesians 1, 19 through 23. And I really think there's, that's why it, it was significant, and Suzanne knows this when we were off in that other church. We've talked about it a lot of times. But we didn't know the Holy Ghost was telling us something and leading us into something that we had no clue about at the time. And we're seeing it happening, or at least the, the revealing of what God's trying to get across to us uh, today even. However long, 15 years later or, or longer, however long that was, I can't remember now, but quite a while back. So what is the exceeding greatness of His power to us who believe? What is the exceeding greatness of His power to us who believe? It's all power. We're seated at the right hand, right? According to the working of His mighty power, which He wrought in Christ when He raised Him from the dead and set Him at His own right hand in heavenly places where we're seated with Him. Amen? All right, verse 23. Which is His body, the fullness of Him that filleth all in all. Us. All right, Ephesians 2, verse 6. Verse 6. 
and hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. We are above the enemy. Hallelujah. We have authority over them. All the works of the enemy. Jesus did. Even when he was in the earth. And now he's seated in heavenly places with all authority and we're seated there with him. We are one with him. We are him in the earth. We are above the enemy. We have authority over every enemy. Luke 10 verse 19. We're afraid to make the devil mad. I mean, half the church is scared to say anything to the devil for fear that he'll retaliate. That's right. Stay in the spirit. He ain't going to retaliate. He's going to flee. Right. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Over all the power of the enemy. Right. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. That's huge. Thank the Lord. Romans 5.17 again. And we look at this in the context of what we've been reading. Boy, uh, if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. We rule as kings in life. We rule over circumstances. We rule over poverty, over disease, over anything that would hinder us. We have authority over it. Nothing shall by any means harm you because you're above all of it. Come on. The spirit world is controlled by the Word of God. The natural world is supposed to be controlled by us speaking God's Word. It wouldn't even exist if God hadn't have spoken it in the first place. The spoken word of God is creative power. Yes. All right, look at Hebrews 11 and verse 3. 11, 3. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen are not made from things which do appear. Which came first, the chicken or the egg? Neither. A word. Adam said chicken. <laughs> Amen. Gooder than chicken is what we used to say. Praise the Lord. That's gooder than chicken. <laughs> Praise the Lord. It came from the, the invisible to this realm. And we are spirit beings, so we have authority over it. We, have, we are the ones that speak it. Praise the Lord. All right, Hebrews 1 and 3. Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power. Now look at the way this is, the, the way this is put out here. I don't want to parse the whole thing, but I'm just saying. By the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins and sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. Which is where we are seated with him, right? Upholding all things by the word of his power. Notice, not the power of his word. The word of his power. Yes. His power is in the word. Yes. This is the words. It's the power that's behind those words. And we have that power. All power is given unto us. Yes. So when we speak, we're speaking as kings. We're speaking with authority. We're speaking from the throne. His power is in the Word. It's in what He says. And we were created to operate the very same way. Praise the Lord. In His image. Seated with Him now. Equal with Jesus. Joint heirs. And we're still doing stuff human way. 1 John verse 4 and, or excuse me, 1 John chapter 4 and verse 4. 1 John 4 and 4. 
Ye are God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. That makes you greater than the one that's in the world, the little g God of this world. Because, hallelujah, you are one with the God. Hallelujah. Look at Revelation 12 and 11 then. We have overcome. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto the death. That's unto his death. We talked about that already last week or whenever it was. Not, we have to die for this to happen. He already died for it to happen. We just have to be faithful to his death. Amen. So the word of their mouth. Notice, the word overcame. Whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. That's us. I mean, you can't, there's no other, there's no two ways around it. Whatever's born of God overcomes the world. How do we overcome the world? With, with the word. That's right. Yes. Praise the Lord. Matthew 12 and verse 37. Matthew 12 and 37. For by thy words thou shalt be justified. By thy words thou shalt be condemned. God's not condemning us. We condemn ourselves. Because we've got authority to do it. Praise the Lord. Your words of faith in God's word is your voice of authority. That's how you profit. Praise God. John chapter 12 uh, 47 through 50. John 12, 47 through 50. We're about done here. One more scripture after this. John 12, 47 through 50. And if any man hear my words and believe not, I judge him not. For I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. He that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words hath one that judgeth him the word that I have spoken. The same shall judge him in the last day. For I have not spoken of myself, but the Father which sent me, He gave me a commandment, what I should say and what I should speak. Jesus, is only, He only did what He's telling us to do. He's not telling us to do something different. And I know that His commandment is life. Everlasting. And whatsoever I speak, therefore, even as the Father said unto me, so I speak. Here's just a paraphrase him. He says, the Father gave me instructions, what I should say, and those words spoken would produce life, and whatever I speak is exactly what the Father said. That's what this is. He gave us the words to speak. First Corinthians 6, verse 17, we're done. First Corinthians 6 and 17. He that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. We are one with Christ. We are Christ. Talk like it. And see the same results. Praise the Lord. That's what this world is looking for. The world is in the same condition the Jews were when Jesus came. They're looking for an escape. They're looking for an answer. The people through whom it was supposed to came, come didn't get it. Right? They were the means. They were the keepers of the word. They were, the, they were the, the ones who had the connection with God. But because they didn't understand it, because they didn't mix faith with what they had, they didn't ever produce it. There was no profit. We're in the same situation today. We may have more revelation than they had, but if we don't mix faith with this word and start operating in this word, it doesn't, not only does it not profit us, now we're going to go to heaven, but we're not going to have the abundant life here on earth and we're not going to have the influence that we're supposed to have. If Jesus hadn't mixed the word or taken the word that God had spoken to him, look, we just read a, moment, a scripture back here, then he wouldn't have had the influence that he had. The reason he was able to influence the world in the way that he was was because he only said what his father said. He's given me words to speak. And I speak them and life is the result. When he talked to the devil, the devil shut up. Amen? Come out of him. Right? 
Be healed. Lazarus, come forth. All of those demonic forces that were trying to dominate, he took authority over them. How did he take authority over? By saying only what God said. There's not another plan. There isn't a new plan. There isn't a backup plan. There isn't a plan B. It's the same plan that he had for Jesus. We are the Jesus in the world. The same plan works for us. All power is given unto me. Go ye therefore, he said. That's why we're here. Take authority. And kick some hiney, some devil hiney, praise the Lord. Make him fear you for a change. Make him tremble. Praise the Lord. And angels will be quick to follow your commands. Praise the Lord. Give the Lord a hand clap. Praise God. Amen. Amen. It's not being arrogant. I mean, if you're a king, you're a king. Right? I mean, if you've got authority, exercise it. Because the thing about authority is if you don't exercise it, somebody will. Yep. I, look, I could use Tim for an example. Tim, if you didn't take control in a, when you're going down the road, that guy behind the wheel will. If you just sit there and just let him go and do whatever he wants, he'll, he, he will. He'll probably kill you and him both and maybe somebody else, right? It isn't you're being mean. You're just, I'm the guy with the authority. I know what's supposed to be happening here. And so I'm going to exercise my authority because if I don't, he will. And if he does, we're all in trouble. Yep. And that's the situation we find ourselves in all the time. Mm -hmm. That's just a metaphor for what we're dealing with every day of our lives. When we relinquish authority, when we yield our authority, somebody is going to grab and go with it. Yes. Yes. The world, the devil, amen. And that's not good for them, and it certainly is not good for us. So let's... Be who we are. Let's exercise our authority. Let's take this word and speak it and mix some faith with it and see what happens. Amen. Because you don't have to build up a whole bunch of faith. You just got to believe what it says. And you are, obviously we believe it or we wouldn't be here tonight, would we? We just have to mix it. Amen. Take that word, speak it. Amen. And see what happens. It worked for Jesus. It has to work for us. Same authority. Amen. Same position. Same spirit. I don't just have His Spirit. His Spirit and I are one. Come on. We're inseparable. Come on. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Go, get bold. Stir some stuff up. <laughs> Spook the devil. Have him running for a while. Praise God. In Jesus' name. God bless all of you. Appreciate you being here tonight. Have a great week. Stay safe. Command ye the Lord. Hallelujah. And see what happens. Praise God.